So quickly about the Mother Elephant Studio. We are a company that was founded in 2017. Uh, so this is our global presence. And uh, uh, we are all about open source. So I'm going to talk about basically what we do and yeah, where we're heading in the future. So first, open source. We are uh, very pro open source. So basically build all our business on the open source and we support a uh, few projects um, pretty much all the time. So one of them is GitLab. So GitLab has been great for us as a small business to uh, actually uh, build the company and do all sorts of support from ticketing system to Zendesk type of things to software development and communicating with the clients. Uh, I'm actually a GitLab hero and I do training for uh, not affiliated training for GitLab from time to time. So they're usually free and I also do uh, help them do contribute to the code. So the second project we support uh, is um, Bootstrap. So Bootstrap is a great framework and uh, I'll talk a bit more about Bootstrap and Drupal in the future, but uh, we also do help to contribute to this uh, framework and build a lot of sites based on that. Obviously, Drupal, this is our bread and butter. We do it um, pretty much most of our, pro, like 95% of our projects are Drupal based uh, or touch Drupal one way or another. So, now a bit about work. Again, we're a very, very small company. So, um, we did a few quite an exciting uh, projects, and this is just the highlights of what we did. So, first thing is uh, State Library Queensland, that was quite an interesting migration from proprietary CMS and six WordPress websites. It took about six months and we migrated into a single Drupal 8 installation back in 2018. The actual migration process was the kind of quite an interesting one, but um, now it's on consolidated in one. Um, the library actually had different departments and different buildings running different websites. So it was interesting to not only work with um, like uh, team and upskill the development team in there, but also to uh, help them and migrate and consolidate all this data. So we do work for with non for profits as well. So uh, a relationship Australia Queensland, and we do look after about half a dozen of their websites. So that's the latest edition that was built during the coronavirus, and it's actually interesting to see how. E government projects are different from NGO and what sort of requirements are there. So we do work with NGO. Now, another great migration project is mazdabrisbane.com. So the challenge was here, they have about like tens and thousands of images to migrate. And uh, that was at the time we were doing the regional migration when the media library, Drupal media library wasn't ready yet. So, uh, but was almost there, like a Drupal 8.5.4. Uh, so it was an interesting way to find a solution, make sure it actually will be used and would be supported when we uh, actually, um, yeah, release it and when the media manager is up. Uh, so we work with some government organization like a Triple C and helping them to migrate their websites to Drupal um, 8 and 9 but we're also uh, helping them with uh, integrations like Dynamics 365, uh, this particular one. So uh, build a couple in-house applications. This one is interesting because it tightly integrates with um, Salesforce and it's a quite a significant um, application. We migrate hundreds of builds between Salesforce. Uh, like Salesforce in this case is a single source of truth. So we don't have to do like a bi-directional syncing yet, uh, but it's a quite large system and actually shows how Drupal can withheld quite a lot of traffic and also um, large, large data structures. I'm talking about a couple of hundred fields and content types. So that's a, that was a few projects uh, we were building in the last, couple of years. So now I'll talk a bit more about community and what we do for a community. So uh, during the COVID, we had a bit of a break uh, mid last year and we were contacted uh, by David from Alianza del Amor. He's Australian 
Like uh, Il who is now living in Peru, and uh, you can read about the response project that we helped build um, on Drupal.org uh, and Pantheon as well. Uh, so there was a, like an interesting collaboration to actually help distribute food. And this project is quite interesting because uh, we were actually building the software as they were trying to distribute large amount of foods, as you can see by the numbers on the screen. So that's, um, yeah, it will really put different perspective of how you can build, you know, Drupal websites, but actually people the next day would be using it for um, very, very uh, challenging um, and uh, t tasks. And that was during the pandemic as well. So we do uh, organize uh, uh, quite a few events, including training and the meetups. So, um, and the contribution weekend as well. So we're running it for a few years now in Brisbane, town of Brisbane. So yeah, and uh, trying to sync it with a global contribution weekend, which is on every January. So I think it's third year in a row we're running it in, down in Brisbane. Uh, luckily, all the spaces are now open, so we can continue actually meet face to face and help people out. Like uh, Drupal Brisbane Meetup is another thing we've been looking after and actually sponsoring for the last couple of years. So we are virtually in our face to face thanks to a TAFE Brisbane uh, every second Tuesday. So if you're in Brisbane, feel free to pop in or we're still doing them virtually so you can jump online and help that. We did organize a few Drupal Camp Byron Base. The last one was 2019 and we're pretty much uh, single driving force be behind the Drupal Camp Byron Bay oh, for obvious reasons last year was canceled. So at the moment we are looking if we should organize one or more Drupal camps this year. So we actually had a few locations. Um, we decided to stay for obvious reasons um, closer to state at least. So there is a Brisbane, Bundaberg, or maybe going back to Byron Bay towards the end of the year where if borders are open or we have a bubble, maybe a few interstate or people from New Zealand can join us. But again, this is, um, uh, but in case there, and if anyone is interested to co-organize it as well, uh, I would be happy to uh, hear from people. Training, we organize a few trainings uh, for a number of years now, trying to sync it with the uh, uh, Drupal Global Training Day. I was doing them absolutely for free. This year, we're trying something different. I actually started, uh, as I mentioned before, we are a big supporter and working with uh, GitLab, so organized Drupal and GitLab series, so doing a bit of a CI. Um, so we already ran uh, one workshop in February. Uh, it was online and next one is coming on the 1st of April. So you can uh, go and register on the Mother Elephant Studio website. Uh, you can also find details on Brisbane Drupal meetup page. And uh, this is just a two and a half hour workshop on how to start working with a uh, GitLab CI but, and just um, making sure. So the first workshop was about how to um, run proper CI and checks and linting. And this one would be about writing and running Drupal unit tests inside your CI. Uh, but throughout the last couple of years, we organized workshop on building various websites from beginner basic kind of, you know, uh, internet or uh, furniture shop to a quite um, uh, intermediate and uh, advanced level uh, websites using views, uh, web forms, and so on and so forth. So we, uh, I just keep making um, myself um, try to find a different topic or just react to the response we had from people. This year we already uh, had a, one request to actually try to organize something like a, a Drupal and a search engine optimization SEO. So that might be coming in June or later in the year, like September. Again, they're all free and I'll try to make them available online unless we have a quite significant response in Brisbane. They'll just do it a face to face uh, workshop here, but they are synced with Drupal Global Training Days, which you can find on Drupal Global Training Days page on Drupal.org. Now, about a bit about our contributions. So, we obviously do look after a few themes and modules. 
So probably uh, my pride and joy is a Booster 4, a very clean kind of non-prescriptive theme, uh, which includes Booster for libraries. And uh, we we've seen quite a significant uptake. So it's going to 4,000 plus usages. Uh, and this is just uh, you know the theme that a um, couple of people looked after. Uh, and yeah, it's been qu quite an interesting journey to actually get and build thing from scratch in a few years and see where it's heading. So there is obviously, a, I think if you're in Drupal business, you probably saw there is a bit of a kind of split in theming at the moment, no one actually invests in the theme. So everyone's just trying to go grab some sort of a React view, Angular Beast and do something there or try to do a decouple. Whereas um, I think the theming layer was neglected for a few years now. And this is more of a, our response to how to do a theme. Uh, I know there are big changes coming to a theme builder in uh, Drupal 10 as well, which is um, I'm following the, and that's a great work, but just having a good, you know, bootstrap based thing where you have a lot of elements already styled is also great idea. Also, there are new themes uh, in core as well, which are great for, you know, quick and prototyping projects. So as I said, the, the uh, uptake of the theme was quite an interesting journey. And we also introduced, uh, for one of the clients, we introduced Drupal 7 theme because they requested it uh, using Booster 4. And uh, now, without even a stable release, there are already almost 100 sites using it. Uh, the next step in the evolution of themes is Booster 5. So this is, um, yeah, uh, if you don't follow Bootstrap development, uh, Beta 2 was released. They dropped a few things, including jQuery support. Um, so it's, um, yeah, all in one kind of uh, library, which we're happy to just uh, create a new theme for. Um, uh, we thought and uh, deliberated about it would be a good idea to maybe include it in Bootstrap 4, but then we saw was was following the update from Bootstrap 3 to Bootstrap 4, and it was quite a significant change. So we decided it's probably a good idea to keep them separate rather than try to cater for two different frameworks. So we did build a few Drupal 9 modules, I guess two of them that are quite used as paragraph admins that actually allows you to go and delete or check your paragraphs as a separate entity. And another one that I really enjoy building, it's a CK editor, uh, spell check as you type. If you did multi-browser testing, uh, you probably um, seen that some browser, especially for CK editor, they don't highlight errors and stuff like that. So this plugin for CK editor actually allows you to do that. And we just build an integration for that. Well, late last year, a few of our clients obviously um, uh, start getting updates to Drupal 9. So, and a lot of modules were outdated or, you know, uh, just the uh, contributors either left or had something better to do. So there were a lot of Drupal 8 modules which required either minimal or for some or quite a significant uh, reworking done to be actually up, um, compatible with Drupal 9. So throughout the last year, we did, I don't know, maybe a good dozen of modules or migrated them to Drupal 9. And uh, there are quite a few integrations there uh, that we help to move over to Drupal 9, including HubSpot, uh, which is CRM, and a couple of mail clients like MailChimp and Campaign Monitoring, and looking after them. Uh, and this year, a few clients who are actually still running Drupal 7 up, uh, update uh, realized that a lot of Drupal 7 modules actually no longer supported by PHP 7.2, 7.3, or 7.4, so any of the latest versions. So there's a lot of modules for Drupal 7. We had about you know a couple of thousand users at the moment, but they're not compatible with the latest secure versions of PHP. So the, we actually jump and help to move um, and this work is still going to help uh, update a couple of Drupal 7 modules because Drupal 7 due to COVID is uh, updated until uh, support for Drupal 7 is on until November 2022. 
uh, we uh, yeah it just makes sense to update a lot of triple seven modules considering a lot of them hasn't been updated for five six seven and more years uh, so a bit about support we are drupal association organizational partner and we're trying to get all our developers um, to be a drupal association member we lobbying for people to actually go and help support Drupal association any means possible. Uh, we also became a monthly donor to Webform module for Drupal on Open Collective. I talk about it all the time at Drupal Brisbane Meetup. So if your your company is using Webforms, um, you probably know how precious and how important this project is for Drupal future. So I would kind of uh, recommend you to, uh, again, go and support them any which way you want, especially if your company is using, making money of using the um, web forms. So we are a partner of a few companies. So actually uh, last year we went and uh, actually 2019, we became Google Cloud partner. So, and uh, we are, uh, Yep, Google Cloud par partner. So um, have a couple of Google Cloud architects. And we're also working closely uh, with Platform SH as a partner, although we do support clients on all major three, Acquia, Pantheon, uh, but Platform is our go-to platform as a company. So what future holds for us? So we are working on a few events, as I mentioned before, maybe camps, definitely monthly uh, meetups, trying to go get that going, especially for people remote, training, uh, contribution sprints, maybe thinking of monthly or bi-monthly, uh, some sort of mentoring uh, program. Luckily, we can do that in Brisbane, face-to-face. So we just started the apprenticeship. So we got the first apprentice and trying to upskill them and see all the challenges that it brings. Hopefully it will eventuate into something like a blog or a talk, but it's interesting to see. We are working with Dave Brisbane and trying to source some of the talent there and uh, see what sort of gaps are there between uh, you know, just graduating from college or uni and actually being a software developer on a large Drupal project. So that's been taking quite a significant number of time and we're working on a couple of products as well. So they're probably gonna be services, Drupal based, but uh, yeah, at the moment we had a few kind of playgrounds here and there. So hopefully this year, that's uh, what we're gonna concentrate on apart from all the ongoing Drupal work.